Seahawks fans, wherever you may be. Welcome back for another edition of the Seahawks Playbook Podcast. Join your host, Bill Alpstead, and co-host, sports writer and football analyst, Keith Myers, as we talk Seahawks football. Hey Seahawks fans, welcome back to another episode of the Seahawks Playbook Podcast. I'm your host, Paul Ofsted, sitting down with co-host Keith Myers, here to talk about safeties in the draft class uh, in our continuing series on draft prospects in the 2023 draft. Um, Seattle seems, uh, at first glance, well-equipped uh, in at safety, but upon closer inspection, we're not quite sure on uh, Ryan Neal. If uh, he's going to, obviously, I think they, 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 you know, put a restricted tender on him and um, then, then questions about, about Jamal Adams uh, being ready for the season and then his large cap number, as well as Quandre Diggs. Uh, did Diggs play up to his expectation on his big cap number at $18 million? Um, lots of, lots of question marks, I think, uh, and, and a good conversation to be had in this show. Welcome in. Yeah, um, let's just start there with, with Seattle's roster because you have a, um, you know, I mean, Diggs is 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 there entrenched as the starter, but his eighteen million dollar uh, cap hit is going to be hard to work with, and so um, that makes that makes it a little bit challenging because he's a guy that I think you want, you want to keep, but that's really expensive. He's for, Seattle's best recruiter, by the way, too. That He's helps. always on social media, <laughs> pining for players like uh, Darius Slay is out there. It's it apparently is going to be made available, um, and he was the first one on Twitter to say, "Hey, dude, <laughs> Seattle's a pretty good place to be. Why don't you come and join me again?" Uh, they no, were prior that teammates. Would be cool. in uh, I would, I would have no problem with that. Um, yeah, so he's a guy that um, that. I think they would like to rework that contract a little bit, maybe extend them a year or two and, and get that cap number down in a more reasonable spot rather than like doing something crazy, like cutting him. But um, yeah, right. Right. You know, sure. Uh, Jamal Adams is on the roster again with an $18 million uh, cap hit. They've got nothing out of him the last couple of years because of injuries. I think he's done as a Seahawk. They'll just use the post. So talk to me about, with him. talk to me about the idea of, of if he's not done. I don't know that the team agrees with that. Uh, you know, I, I certainly haven't seen a lot of that commentary as far as Condotta or anybody else talking about Jamal Adams being cut or cap casualty. When you well, take most- a look at this free agent setup that we're kind of doing, in fact, our next show, uh, we're going to have a, uh, our guest Dan Viennes join us uh, mm-hmm. for a kind of a primer for free agency. I just haven't heard Jamal Adams' name come up as a guy that's well, potentially you- going to be cut. If you look at his contract and you go, oh, well, let's go ahead and cut him. Um, his cap, he costs more to cut than he does to keep. And so um, it's actually a, a net loss uh, by cutting him. So, you know, well, and that's the case, you're going to stick him, keep him around. And I think most people look at that and and, and just assume that um, despite the fact that it's a bad contract, that it's not cuttable. Um, and they'd be right if it wasn't for that post-June 1st designation. And I think yeah. that... Um, when you do that, you're able to get eight and a half million dollars of cap relief. And for a guy whose production was non-existent the last couple of years um, because of injury, but that's just who he is, his body type and, and whatever. I, I think he's a, a guy that, and the way he plays, he's going to always be injured. And so I agree with uh, that. You can replace his production with, um, Absolutely, with the player not. that's going to actually be on the roster <laughs> and, uh, well, <laughs> and be active. Yeah, but I mean, so you can replace his production with nothing, um, and so therefore, getting him off the roster doesn't make your team worse. And I love how diplomatic you are. He didn't play. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm just giving you a hard time. I'm not talking about. His I just talent. know. I just I'm know the haters. That. You just, know, will come for you on uh, on YouTube. I said, I'm not talking about his talent. I'm not talking about his potential production. I'm talking about his production that he had last year, which he didn't play. It was he had zero production. So you can replace that with a swift breeze. Um and with Tease Tabor. 
Yeah, no, I, I get it. Um, Jonathan Abram. Okay, so yeah, she's, you know, we were down safeties last year. Ryan oh, Neal yeah. uh, was hurt at times. Josh Jones got hurt. Joey Blount ended up on IR at the end of the season. Of course, Jamal Adams played half a game at the beginning of the year, and that was it. Mm-hmm. Brought in Tease Tabor. He's, you know, our, our guy at the free safety. He's not even a really good free safety. He's more of a guy that comes up. Uh, Jonathan Abram was in there. He has no coverage skills whatsoever, just a mm-hmm. box safety. That's all Jonathan Abram is. Now he's a good hitter, he, you know, all that kind of stuff. He he played well in that role for us at the end of the year. But our shelves are kind of bare, uh, bare after Quandre Diggs. We know that uh, Ryan Neal is a restricted free agent, Keith. Yeah, he's uh, a what restricted do you think they do free that? agent. I think they go with the um, second round tender for him, which basically um, – it guarantees him some money. It also lets him negotiate with other teams if he wants and if they want. And, but any if he signs an offer sheet, then Seattle can match it and um, keep him, or they can let him go and get a second round pick back. I think they would, unless it's just a crazy deal. They would. I mean, probably what if it's match. like a three year, twenty seven million, you know, something like that, three year, twenty seven million dollar offer sheet, or a or a three year, thirty five, whatever. It, it's kind of painful and. You three or thirty-five at the, would be would be um, you'd take the second round pick three or twenty-seven um, for a starting strong safety who. But look if, at the investment at the position then that you would have. You'd have Quandre Diggs at eighteen point something. You'd have Jamal Adams at eighteen points, and then you'd have uh, Ryan Adams Neal. Would be, Adams would be gone. Adams would absolutely yeah. be gone because you're if you're signing um, Ryan Neal to that, you're signing him to be your starter. Yes. And, and and that would be the end of it. Um, so he would, um, Jamal Adams would absolutely be gone. Um, and I, I think that's almost certain to happen anyways, just with that post June 1st designation. Um, and so Ryan Neal was the, what be- played better last year than Jamal Adams has played in the Seahawk uniform. Yeah. Not only just because he's on the field and he's able to be consistent in that way. He's just a more physical cover. player. He's a sure tackler. He can, and he cover. can cover. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, Adams is a uh, super athlete who gets to places where you kind of don't expect him to. He just lights guys up. Um, and so he's kind of that guy that makes opposing, you know, slot receivers afraid to go over the middle type of thing. So there, there's value in, in what he does and what he brings. Um, 18 million is a little extreme for a guy that his, you know, um, is limited. It's just not a very good coverage safety. It would have been uh, interesting to see how Seattle was going to play him last year. I think that, that we were going to see some changes, maybe bring some things back that he did had done the prior year, his mm-hmm. first year in Seattle, where he had the nine and a half sacks and just a little bit more disruptive overall. They kind of used him as a hybrid athlete rather than just a you know traditional in the box safety. Yeah, his first year um, at that was, you know, that's probably the best way to use him is it just let him be disruptive all over the place. Um, and, but the second year he didn't, they, he didn't, they didn't do much with him in last order, year. He was hurt. In, in order to be able to do that no. though, Keith, you need to have really, really good players around him that, that True. can cover for him. Because if you're going to, if he's going to ad lib and ad hoc his way around the football field, which is essentially what he does you know, Diggs has got to be on his game. You've got to have really good slot corner. You've got to, everyone's just got to be really good. And last year we had just a lot of rookies, a lot of new uh, guys, a new scheme. I don't know how that was going to work, but uh, we didn't, we didn't find out. It'd be interesting though, if, if they decide to go that route or if they feel enamored about that spot enough to where they look in the draft for a player to replace Adams with a similar role. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think you can replace Adams with Abrams for the, the vet minimum and have that role covered. Because that's, I mean, that's what Jonathan Abrams so Ryan did. Ryan Neal's your starter. Jamal Adams is cut. Mm-hmm. A guy like Jonathan Abrams comes in or a guy in the draft uh, to be your uh, in-the-box safety. And that's it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that um, because he's been around the team for a while and he was a con- corner and he spent some time in the practice squad and whatever. I think people undersell what Ryan Neal has done. Um, I agree. And this is a guy who is, was one of the better strong safeties in the league last year. Pro football um, focus, Adam Reed is their number one strong yeah. safety. And, uh, and that's, that's where I see him. I, he, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that he can cover with the best of them. Um, and I, I think that the team 
should recognize that uh, Ryan Neal is a better player than Jamal Adams, and he will play the position at a fraction of the cost. Ryan Neal came in uh, to Seattle on a on the practice squad originally as a really uh, long uh, corner. cover corner. Yeah, he was a cornerback, and they moved him to safety, and they moved him back to corner because they were desperate, and then they moved him back to safety, and he settled in as a strong safety and has. The yeah. guy can play. The guy yeah. can just play. All right, let's talk about safeties in this draft. Now, of course, we're talking about free safeties and strong safeties. We're kind of going to jump back and forth and blend these things a little bit. There's also hybrid safeties, guys that can kind of do it all. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's what we're talking about here. Um, Which is actually what Quandre Diggs is, is a hybrid safety. We only use him as free safety, but he was used at strong safety quite a bit. Um in Detroit before coming to Seattle. And there was a point a couple of seasons ago when um, there were so many injuries that um, he ended up playing uh, strong safety for the last two games of, this, of the year. Um, and so there's, he is his hybrid guy. And yeah. so you can, if you get another hybrid guy next to him, now you can rotate guys yes. and you can have whichever different guys back different guy up make it harder on the quarterback and multiple looks in your in your defense and coverage yeah mm -hmm. um yeah like a guy like ugo amadi was a hybrid safety guy that in in college played a lot of free safety uh could play come up and play strong safety for you because he was just a physical guy and then when he got to the seahawks they used him as a slot cover corner yeah, so they moved him all over the place. Um, yeah. I didn't really like him as a, as a strong safety. I thought he was way undersized. But I do. I agree. He's gone now. So let's talk about players who might be in Seattle. Um, and I think we start right at the very top with uh, Jordan Battle um, out of Alabama, a guy that... Yeah. Um, true strong safety. True strong safety. And, um, you know, 6'1", 209, uh, so he's not huge for a safety, but he's not undersized in any way. Um, four five five forty is a, was uh, a little disappointing. He had a chance to, I think, really solidify himself as the top safety if he'd run a little faster than that. But I don't really have a massive concern mm -hmm. um, with. I mean, he's no one's going to think that he's Earl Thomas, but he doesn't play free safety. He's a strong safety, and I think that. Um, I think a guy Jordan Battle is actually stuff. undervalued in this draft. I really think Seattle is going to be drawn to a player like this just because of the natural leadership ability that he had at Alabama, all the snaps that he took, the football IQ. A lot of that makes up for the the speed. He's still a four or five guy, um, but he's he is one of the the um, one of the guys in the top of the draft. Let's just say between rounds. Uh, one and, and two, maybe top of the third, that is really a true strong safety in this in this draft. And if you're looking for one, this would be one of the guys that you you definitely look at. Yeah, if you're looking for a true strong safety, he's the best of the group. And um, I you're I think you're talking about other players down into the third because there's no way Jordan Battle lasts to the third round. Is there? well, he's certainly like on big boards and stuff. He, he he's yeah in the second round. Yeah, round two. I just don't see yeah. him drop drop it into three. Um, I think he'll be er, early to mid round two, somewhere in the forty range. Um, which he might be the first safety off the board. And if he is the first safety off the board, you can't. You got to say, wait, the first safety is not going to come off until the forties, and that that will tell you a little bit about this draft class. The I disagree with you a little bit a on this. Team. I think that Brian Branch comes off first and Brian Branch. You okay. Do. You can say he's going to be a slot cover guy in the NFL, which is potentially true. Undersized at 511, 190, ran a four, five, eight, 40. He's not extremely straight line speed fast, but he's definitely quick. And he's twitchy. quick. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, and, and, and one of the, one of the best players, what at NFL football, I think in this draft is Brian Branch, a guy that you can play. You talk about hybrid. He could play um, free safety. I think in a cover two for you. So two, two high safeties. I think that if you're going to put him back there by himself on an Island, I don't know that he's that player, but if you pair him with another safety, I think that he becomes uh, much more effective and then can come up and play that slot uh, cover corner for you as well. Um, and, and everyone just loves this guy. I mean, everyone's raving about his interview process and his leadership ability and just excellent in zone coverage. 
and so forth. Um, yeah, and one of the best uh, coverage rates and and on the ball players in the draft, I think. Yeah, I've got him as a as a corner. I think that um, he's a guy that you play him at um, as a slot corner, um, knowing that he is just so 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 twitchy as a as an athlete. It's just so quick that he can handle all of the um, responsibilities that's in there, um, and just super smart guy. Guy just. Um, there. Interesting that uh, I was just flipping over to my notes on him as uh, his NFL comparison is uh, Nika Fitzpatrick, which is a safety safety slash um, cornerback like hybrid who does mm-hmm. many many things uh, uh, outstanding. Um, which okay, if you're taking him as a safety, he would be the first safety off the board. Um, if you're taking him as a corner, he's going to be down. I think he goes late round one. So. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, how do what? How do you feel about Antonio Johnson? He seems to me to be a tweener, and I'm not exactly sure how where he fits in the NFL. Oh. Unless he adds a little bit of weight, like he's came in at what six one one ninety eight, runs a four five two, not extremely fast, but all indications from from everything that I'm reading and seeing about him is he's uh, better at, as being a kind of a upfront uh, in the box type safety and he just doesn't have the size yeah he um he reminds me of guys like um jamal adams that are they play up in the box but they don't have the size to or athleticism to do what um cam chancellor did up in the box um jamal adams has the athleticism um to go with it this guy does not this guy so he's he's undersized um he's not and he just doesn't have the great athleticism. The Thirty-one um, inch vert and, and one hundred and eighteen inch uh, broad jump indicates that he's less than the ideal explosiveness. I just don't see this guy being drafted. Now, you go look at big boards uh, prior to the combine, and this guy is fringy uh, round one, round two. I just don't see it. I mean, he, he might be a great football player, but mm-hmm. with that lack of athleticism at that size in the NFL, you're going to get eaten alive. Yeah, he's a he's not good enough in coverage, um, in my opinion, and um, just isn't athletic enough to to really do the strong Make safety thing. I, right. I just I look at I I really wanted him to come in and do really well at the combine just to give me something to um, yes. to work with and and yeah. and and be like okay, so this is how this is why he's getting drafted and this is you know what you're getting someone who can turn into a good player, but his combine was just non interesting. It was just eight reps on the bench press. He doesn't have like great strength. It's just okay. So know. opposite, so let's go in the opposite direction and go with one of the best surprises. Well, not necessarily surprise, but affirmations for me in the draft was Sidney Brown. Uh, the, the uh, safety out of Illinois is at five, nine, a little, little short, but 211 pounds. He looks, he reminded me of um, uh, who was that wide receiver we had that that uh, Tate, Golden Tate. He looks like Golden Tate, like the same sort of body, like a little short stature, but stocky, four but four stocky, seven forty, one big, big legs. Um, yeah, one point five one ten yard split, the forty point five vertical, and the one thirty broad jump. Opposite of what we just talked about, yeah. and um, Antonio Johnson. Yeah, super athletic. Um, Physical player um, for his size, but five ten. That lack of length is a little troublesome because you mm-hmm. think about. Um, mm-hmm. To me, he's a free safety. He's a he's a back of the um, of the defense kind of guy. And at five ten, you know him going up against a six four wide receiver. That's not yes. going to go well. Right. And I think you're going to run into some problems there. He, and he doesn't have like great length even on top of that. The thirty one and a half inch arm. And he's not twitchy. Um, he's not like a twitchy four four seven. No, um, but he's powerful. He's and, strong. Um, he's really he's, strong. Yeah, twenty three reps on the bench press. So he's um, good in coverage too. He really is. Yeah, but I just think that at the next level, he's he's um, he's a guy that's going to just be outsized. He looks like a guy that's long term a special teams player um, and not a starter. And I 
I have concerns. Like, I don't know if I would take him early or even in the middle rounds of the draft, because I don't know if um, he's got straight line speed, but not great change in direction. Uh, and is the one thing I will say time. this, when you look at him on, on tape, which I did, I went out and I looked uh, specifically at him cause I thought, well, he was one of the best performers at the, at the combine as far as, um, agility testing and, uh, the way that apparently he interviewed and, and so forth. So I want to go check him out and he's a good football player. So, you know, when you, when you look at, at, at tape and you look at all the players around him, he just looks like he, he's a good football player. And sometimes mm-hmm. You, you need guys like that on your roster. You know, maybe it's not your premier starter guy, but but the guy that can come in. I think he's available in, you know, top around three type of a, an area, which would be a good spot for, you know, Seattle to fill that type of role, maybe, if especially if they pick up additional picks. If um, he was two inches and 15 pounds larger, he'd be a great weak side linebacker. Yeah. Yes. Even without changing any of his athletic numbers, um, because he's a physical player, he wraps up, he hits hard, he does those things. Um, I just really have concerns at five ten to eleven um, that because he's a guy that you want up in the box smacking people, not deep, because I think he'll get just outsized deep, but he's not big enough to be up in the box smacking people. So um, he just where does he fit? What I don't know. He might he be fit? a little on the on the short side, but I think uh, body type wise, I think he's he can do it. I think he can be out in the box and and fill that role. I don't um, know. What, who else do you want to talk about? Um, the next guy I think that we should talk about would be um, Ajir Brown, um, out of Penn State. Um, again, undersized, five eleven, two o three. So this guy's like undersized. Um, you know, but is a guy that just is a tackling machine, just comes up. Um, he can line up over the slot and, and do stuff. He can stay in the back and, and, and be in the center field guy, you know, cover one. He can do all these little things. He's just not going to do them as great as yeah. what you're used to, but he's kind of that guy you have on your roster to do everything. Cause he can come in and, and, fill in at five different positions um in terms of as a backup he can cover um and yeah. play corner. you're not saying any you're not so. saying anything exciting you know it's, i thought he's that, not exciting but at yeah the same i thought time, he, he really could have come into the combine and helped himself if he ran in the four fours and a yeah. lot of guys were like this in the safety class you know i was disappointed in, in the, the speed of this class but he came in at four six five. I thought that was extremely disappointing. I thought that pushed him down uh, quite yeah. a bit for me. Um, with the thirty two point five inch vertical, showed the lack of uh, burst and athleticism overall. To me, that really kind of just dropped him into the you know back of the third fourth round, wherever that is for him. Just a guy. He's just a guy. He's just a guy. But, yeah, but he's like he's literally the next guy. And <laughs> well, um, I mean, there's. There's uh, Jamie Robinson, for example, but you want to talk undersized, 5'11", 191, and runs a 4'5", 940 See, with 29-inch arms. He doesn't have the size or length span. to play right, in the back. Right. Um, so and, very disappointing there. I thought Skinner is a guy. So J.L. Skinner, mm-hmm. um, everyone talks about him being a, kind of a hybrid role, but he's 6'3", 209. I mean, you kind of want to have that guy up in the box. Uh, four, five, five, forty. He's not going to be a long speed player for you in the back, but he could be kind of a that hybrid role if you pair him up with it with an uh, with another free safety. I think um, he's and- more of a hybrid guy because he has um really good um read Ball react skills. um yeah. Yeah. you know in terms of in coverage, but also with that um size, he tackles well and and does stuff up in the box. But he's not a guy that he's not um you know, a guy that you want up there taking those hits over and over again. I think that having him in a situation where you play with two interchangeable safeties, like with him and Diggs, I think is a, is a better, yeah. um, a agree. better look. Yeah. And he, he only surrendered a quarterback rating of uh, one target of 37.8, which was one of the best uh, rates uh, given his, um, his snap count. 
in the in college football. So uh, it'd be an interesting player for me. I like him because he's explosive and he's got the cover skills. So it's a candidate for me, you know, um, and, and a good fit. Um, I was just looking through my list here of a guy. Let me bring Is up it, another uh, another conversion project. Uh, Julius Brents, Kansas State. He's listed as a cornerback. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really stuff. like him in the draft too. Six six three, um, one ninety eight. But this is a guy who is a Ryan uh, Neal for him. He's yeah. He's I mean he's Ryan Neal, but he's again, but he's more of a hybrid safety. He can do both. Uh, mm-hmm. The the four five three isn't you know it isn't the speed you want from a true center field um you know cover one safety but the rest of his uh athletic numbers are really good um and i i just think that he's a guy that is he's a zone um a zone coverage specialist as a cornerback he had a 41.5 inch vertical man yeah that's Um, that's elite i like him six 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 three uh three cone which is again very elite um, I, I like him as a guy that um, can I actually be, like him as a press corner. See, I like him as a as a combination like corner slash safety, and let him. You know, you can do all sorts of things with him. He's your safety, but if you want to blitz, you you push him um, over and you let him play corner because he can do it. Um, and then you know, blitz a corner off the edge or, or something like that. You can do so many different things with a guy like this. Um, and I think that using him as just as a cornerback is it's not taking advantage of all the, the different things that you can do with him, um, especially because I like him as a zone corner, not as a, a um, man coverage corner. And so uh, which why he fits well and would fit well in Seattle as a corner. But I also think that he, um, you know, using him as a, as a, as a safety um, slash corner and letting him do a lot of different things, I think would be a great, um, a great fit for him. One of the, my favorite players in this draft at the position is Jotavius Martin, uh, the safety out of Illinois, 5'11, 194 pounds, ran a 4'46, 40, um, 10 yard split of, uh, at 147, which is crazy, at 44 inch vertical, which is the best in the draft. Mm-hmm. And a 133 inch broad jump again, uh, tying for the best in the, in the draft. So super explosive, um, fifth year player. So very experienced. Um, and I just think that, you know, that would be a guy that you could get in the, in the third round, fourth round, um, that, that might be able to, to help your team out in a, in a hybrid role. Um, I like him a little better at that than Julius Brents. I like Julius Brents more as a cover, uh, press corner. But that's just me, and I, I don't know if Pete would see it that way or not, you know, whatever. But Jortavius Martin is really, truly that, a guy that can come up in the box and a guy that can yeah. come up back end as well. I see him as a um, a uh, a free safety um, more than a, than a hybrid guy in the back. He's he doesn't have physical, though, too. Yeah. But that's the thing is he, he you look at, at, you know, being able to come up uh, at free safety and attack the you know attack forward and hit a running back um, who made it into the second level um, and do so at, at high speed so he can just we used to have a safety like that we did his name was Earl Thomas yeah um, Earl Thomas. he doesn't have Earl Thomas speed but he still he he attacks four, four, six is pretty good uh, it is and that and that and that ten yard split at one four seven that's elite. That is elite, and so those are the kinds of things. Like, I just think that you've got you've got a guy that um, comes up and, and does things well, and does them from a deeper position, and can still get there most of the time and make a play early. And I it just he's that kind of playmaker, and I, I think that that is where I'd love to see him. I, if if the Seahawks draft him, I see him as um, the eventual Quandre Diggs replacement. I do too. I do too. Actually, I love this pick. I really do. I mean, it's uh, to me, if he was on the, the team and I, I, and when I do mocks, he's kind of one of the players that I plug in there in the, in the third, fourth round, um, at that like hundred and the, whatever that pick is that we have 114 or 117 right in there. Um, I, I love to kind of plug him in there because that's where you want to, uh, as far as positional value. And, you know, we talk about all that kind of stuff. He's just a good, in uh for a Seahawks draft for me. 
Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if he comes off the board for Seattle. Um, the other guy that I was disappointed, I was disappointed in Brandon Joseph, uh, horrible testing four six two forty. Yeah. He was expected to, to be much better tester 30 and a half inch vertical and 118 broad jump. It's just off the board Yuck. for Seattle. I think at, at that, yep. um, Daniel Scott, while tested really nice from the safety from California at six one two oh eight and a four five uh four four five forty he's gonna be twenty five years old in October he's got the thirty nine and a half inch vertical and the and the one twenty eight inch broad he's strong with twenty two reps on the bench, but with that older prospect coming in as a rookie hey, yeah you know that's that's tough too, so he'd be a kind of a later round guy that you could have on special teams. Um, that you weren't paying very much. I mean, those those um, those guys exist in the NFL for sure. Um, I'm trying to find. There was Ronnie Hickman. Hickman is a is a guy I really like. Ohio State, six foot two hundred three, four five five forty with thirty three inch arms. He's got the length. Uh, come in and play for you. Special teams in the box. Brandon Hill, I thought, did a had a really good testing uh, day at the combine as a kind of a later round prospect at free safety. Uh, 5'10", 193 pounds, around a four four three forty with a one five zero split, which is excellent. Um, so he could kind of be that uh, second free safety for you, come out and and be that slot cover guy. Yeah, I mean, I I think like this is a pretty weak class at safety. I think totally. that we need to um to to make sure that we we get that. I mean, you're not very far down the <laughs> list before. You, uh, I've got some guys it, that are kind of late round flyer guys or, or, you know, priority free agents, if you want to talk about those, but you know, it's, th- there's just after about the, the, the top of the third round, there's just not a lot of depth here. Yeah. There's no, there's nothing at the top and there's nothing at the bottom. There's like in the middle rounds, there's like eight players. Yeah. And, that's and they all of, are slow or, or have some other physical limitations you know yep. and non-explosive players and, and stuff i just don't think there's going to be a lot of safeties on seattle's board that fit you know what they need to have out of their players i just think it's really gonna be limited so i would look later you know uh guys with upside like chamari connor out of virginia tech six foot 202 pounds around a four five 140 with a 40 and a half inch vertical so he's got some athletic attributes that that you might be able to use and kind of um you know, have on special teams kind of mold after a while. A guy like Jervis Owens um, with the 37 and a half inch vertical. The other, the last guy I wanted to talk about was, um, I want to mention, make sure I mentioned him, Christian Young at a University of Arizona, I think is is a guy. You take a flyer on in the seventh round or um, an undrafted rookie free agent, 6'3", 228 pounds, but ran a 4'4", 440. Um, you know, and he, and he's a kind of a, he's a return guy too. So at that size, he could return punts for you. He can, you know, that, um, with, with some athletic upside because there's so many unathletic guys in this draft. I just don't see Seattle going for those guys. I think if you, if you wait and you get a guy, you take a flyer on a seventh round pick or, or an undrafted guy, a guy like Christian Young out of University of Arizona, go check him out. He's, he's actually a really good player. That's actually not anyone that I have on my. I had um, to dig for him. Writer. Yeah, I had to dig for him. He, <laughs> you like, know, he huh. was on Bruce. The reason I found him is he was on Bruce Feldman's freak list at, at 47 overall. Um, ran the four by 100 relay in, in Texas at high school, hit the 22.6 miles per hour uh, in, a, in a game. Uh, he has a sub four four. Um, Let's see. Twitchy explodes out of the back pedal in his zone. I'm reading his, some of his notes. Uh, physical at the line of scrimmage. Good power with his hands. Good ball skills. Turns and locates the ball. All that kind of stuff. Um, his his knocks are he plays out of control. Uh, he uh, hits big hits, but misses tackles, so he doesn't wrap up as much. You know, these are things that you can teach and, and route Hopefully. recognition, all that kind of stuff, right? So you just take a flyer. It's it's one of those things. It's a late round thing. Yeah, that's all I got. I think, and 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 I'm surprised actually that we made it uh, 34 minutes in this conversation because, <laughs> the, to me, I thought this is the weakest uh, position group in the draft. Yeah, sadly, I would agree with that. Um, <clears throat> which is too bad because this is an area where uh, there's need on Seattle's roster, and 
Um, but there's just isn't there isn't there isn't the spot where that lines up where for them to get the guys they need. So they're going to have to to find some vets. They're going to have to do some stuff in in free agency. That's why I'm yeah. uh, I'm fairly certain Ryan Neal will be back. Um, yes, as the starter, and I could see um, Abram back as the backup. Yeah, when you go look at the free safety, like uh, and when you look at the safety uh, list in in free agency, there are some names on there, but a lot of guys are going to be um, brought back to their teams, like Jesse Bates. You know, Cincinnati's not going to give up on Jesse Bates, Von Bell. Again, with Cincinnati, that they may keep one, maybe one's made available. I'm not sure. Uh, Jimmy Ward, Adrian Amos, which I liked at one time. Uh, now with Green Bay, used to be with Chicago. Uh, he's now a little older of a prospect and, you know, maybe you bring in a veteran guy like, uh, Adrian Amos to, to play for you a little bit. He maybe still got some coverage skills. Um, yeah, I mean, Taylor Rapp would be interesting. Yeah. Juan Thornhill. (laughs) I'm just, (laughs) I'm more interested in, in Jabril Peppers. Um, yeah, interesting. And I like Amos. I think he was a guy that was underused in, in, um, uh, Chicago and really made a difference when he went to Green Bay. But you're right; it's been three years, and he's yes. older now. Right, right. Yeah, there's there's a there's other names, but you know, they're right now they're just names, and we'll see what happens in in free. I wouldn't be surprised if that's where Seattle spends a little bit of money of their free agency money on a player because of the weakness in the draft as, as a hedge. Now, not counting Ryan Neal, so Ryan Neal plus. One more player, yeah, I think. Because you've got it'd be Ryan nice Neal, to have a true free safety on this roster. Ryan Neal and Diggs, I think you go in with those two as your starter, but you need backups too, right? So you have Abram, um, probably yeah. resigned for veteran near the minimum. veteran minimum uh, to be your backup strong safety, but you still need another guy or two. And um, yeah. Yeah. they may end up going longer at, uh, especially if they don't do anything with the gate they may end up going uh into june position uh with a uh, depending on the draft with a veteran player at strong safety so mm-hmm. we'll see but i would like to see them maybe bring in a better option at either a hybrid guy or a true free safety that you could move on from quandre diggs in a year uh, and and I'm not moving on from Quandre because he's uh diminished as a player too much although I think he had a better uh end of season than he had a, uh, at the beginning of the season he struggled but he struggled the uh, first half, half of the year last year hard. he struggled the first half of the year last year I, I think we can we can all admit that and and not um you know feel bad about that evaluation but he played better the last half yes, of the he year did. No, he did um, he really turned it on I think it you know he just recovered finally I think from the knee Mm-hmm. Or, or was it the sh- the, the break, the sh- the shin, uh, mm-hmm. the, the tibula, right? Yeah, I think it was. It was some of it was that. Some of it was just a little bit of being tentative because of, um, you know, you have that big injury, and it takes a little bit before mentally you move on from it. And, um, he was a guy that, you know, like we said, didn't have the greatest, um, you know, didn't have the greatest year, but looked better. Um, yeah. well, he played up to his contract in the second half of the year. I mean, he finished strong. We had, you know, multiple interceptions again. Um, mm-hmm. one of the few players in the NFL with, with, uh, at safety with uh, multiple interceptions over, uh, three or four years. Uh, you know, so he's, he's steady, but at 18 point, whatever million dollars per year, that's you want a, a premier all pro guy at that spot. That's, that's, that's yeah. what they make. And, and so not that. And he's not that he's, but he's steady and he provides the veteran uh, leadership on the team. And, and, and they're in, uh, they're, I think they're, they're in a position value. to carry that 18 million this year um, for a guy that's steady, just simply because there's, there's not a lot of great, not great alternatives. Um, and yeah. so there's that, but at the same time, like you need, they need to, they need to, they need a plan going they forward long-term because, yeah. because he isn't, that cap number for that production aren't they're not aligned and so you either need to find a way to get his cap number down by giving him an extension that doesn't pay him quite as well um and hopefully that he'll, he'll take that or you need to you need to draft a, a, an eventual replacement 
Agreed. All right, let's get out of here. Next show is going to be fun. Stick around uh, for that and and find that this this week. We're going to be talking with Dan Viennes uh, coming on our show of uh, the Field Goals Podcast. That's going to be transitioning into his own show, uh, Seahawks Forever um, podcast, which I'm excited for him. Uh, he's branching out again on his own. He's he's done a few of uh, those over the years, uh, but to have him on to, to uh, have a big uh, free agency conversation with us uh, midweek is going to be exciting. Obviously, free agency starts uh, on the 15th, and um, we're going to have some uh, initial tampering uh, conversations to talk about as well, uh, because <laughs> as we know, that starts, uh, what, on the 12th or something like that, right? You know, yep, three days of legal tampering. Uh, which is just completely stupid, but um, it, it, so there'll be pretty much, you know, um, contracts announced ahead of time uh, without being signed yet. Uh, but it's just kind of it's it's nutty. Yeah, the, I mean the the reason for the the whole thing is that yeah, contracts will be announced. Hey, they agreed to this, but they can't be signed yet. So if a team can actually come in and go, wait, 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 wait. If you're willing to take that, here, let us offer you this. And then you, you, you've seen, we've seen people mm, back, back out of, of, of contract offers um, that they've supposedly agreed to um, because, yeah. you know, someone came through and offered them more. Interesting. And we'll find out what happens with Ryan Neal because that'll be, that'll be something too. I think that'll that's be- important for Seattle to be able to retain him. But if they don't, if they, uh, if he gets an offer out there that's just kind of, crazy Seattle may end up you know with a with an extra second round pick because I think that's what happens I think he signs a second round tender uh at three and a half million dollars or whatever be a great value for the team good for Ryan Neal that's a pay raise from last year but I think undervalued though in the league and Mm -hmm. we'll see if somebody jumps on that and and sends him an offer sheet that'd be very interesting um all right so let's get out of here find Keith on Twitter at Myers NFL you can find me at NW Seahawk once you find the show at Seahawks Playbook podcast uh hit that subscribe button whether it's the audio only show you can find it all over the place on almost every podcast platform there is or we've got our own youtube channel at cx playbook podcast and uh hit that subscribe button that would really help so until next time go hawks go hawks seahawks playbook podcast listeners thanks for joining us for another edition of the show you can find us on twitter bill is at nw seahawk keith is at myers nfl And the show is at Hawks Playbook. You can listen and subscribe to the show at SeahawksPlaybook.com.